So to start we're going to just make a simple slip knot. We're going to go ahead and anchor that down on a peg that is not our starter peg. We just want one that's next to it. Um, we're going to do um, a non-loopy cast on and I've modified it to be a flat cast on. I'm not sure uh, to work a flat panel. I'm not sure if this already exists, but I just kind of made it up because I really like the look of the non-loopy cast on. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and do that. So what you want to do, um, the non-loopy cast on calls for you to e-wrap each or every other peg. So to e-wrap you would go around the back, then around the front, and around the back again. So because we're going to be working in a flat panel and not going in a circle, what we want to do is do a reverse e-wrap on these pegs, which means we just want to make that twist go in the opposite direction. So we can go ahead and we can e-wrap the pegs first and then we can go back and untwist them and twist them the other direction. E-wrap the peg as usual. Then you would go back in, take the loop up off of the peg, and twist it so it's going the other way. So you can see that a regular E-wrap, the working yarn goes under and then back over the top. But if you reverse it, the working yarn will come underneath the yarn. Instead of around the top, it will come around and go under the bottom of the wrap. Um, so you can do that, but I like to just go ahead and reverse e-wrap as I go. So as I go, I would just take it and I would make the little circle and flip it as I go. So you can flip it like this. So I would just take it around to the side and put that loop onto the peg first and then continue going. Like this. So you want to go ahead and reverse e-wrap for the number of pegs you're going to be working with. And once you've done that, the second part of the cast on is to go ahead and unit wrap every peg, which means that you have to also reverse e-wrap every peg. We do the, the empty pegs one at a time. So what we want to do is go ahead and bring our working strand around our last peg and knit over. Then we want to pick up the yarn in between of the ladder and go ahead and e-wrap that peg in the reverse and knit over. So here's one that's already reverse e-wrapped. We're going to knit it off. And then here's one of the empty pegs. I like to pull out the slack a little bit, take to the side, and lift and over. And you can see that the orientation of that yarn is exactly the same as the ones that we reverse e-wrapped. The yarn coming out this way, going around underneath and to the side. And then you can go ahead and knit that peg. Then knit the next one. And then when you come to another empty one, I'm going to pull the ladder, lift it and flip it over the peg. and then you can knit that peg. And I like to pull the slack out of every stitch as I go. It does a couple of different things to do that. It brings all of your working stitches 
to the back and tightens up that cast on. And also gives you a little more room to work with your live stitches. And then we'll knit the first peg. And there we are. Fully cast on. At this point you can go ahead and start your pattern with the first row. So those two steps are your cast on. They're not your pattern. So your first row of pattern begins now. And there are a couple of options in this uh, for the tie in this pattern and one of them is a super simple one the easiest one is the garter stitch and basically what you would do is you're going to go ahead and knit in one direction and purl in the other direction so I'm going to remember that every time I work to the right I'm knitting every time I move and turn and work to the left I'll be purling so to begin I'm going to go ahead and knit the very first stitch and work my way across the row knitting every peg and then on my way back I'm going to go ahead and purl every stitch so I bring the working yarn back around the front of this last peg and purl it. After you get a few rows of stitching in, you can go ahead and remove the slip knot from the peg in the back and you can just pull that slip knot out. So on the next round you would go ahead and purl back to the first peg. Then work your way in that pattern by knitting in one direction, purling in the other until you get to the length that you want in the pattern and there are several different sizes and it's all listed out for you. The other option is to do a seed stitch texture. So what that's going to be is you would knit one purl one knit one purl one knit one, purl one, all the way to the end. So for the next row, you would do the exact opposite. So for every peg that you knit, you would purl. And every peg that you purled you would knit. So this is a two row repeat for the seed stitch which is also very simple and quick and easy. And I'll show you two examples really quickly of what those look like. So this is the garter stitch and you can see that it makes this really cool squishy fabric and this is an example of the seed stitch. It's also a very cool texture with a lot of squish to it as well. It feels really nice. So you can do either one, either texture, and um, on two different gauge sizes. So you just pick which one you want, work them to the length, and then you'll come to a part where you need to decrease. Now to decrease, you will either purl two together or knit two together. So when you come to the decrease, it will say either to knit or purl two together. So we'll just say that this is a knit two together. And 
then when you get to these two loops, you just knit them over. Oops. You just knit them over as if they're one, like that. Very easy. Now, if your pattern says to purl two together, you're going to do the first step exactly the same as knit two together. Just take your last two stitches, lift them onto the pegs next to them. So now you can see we've got two stitches on each of these end pegs. So to purl two together, you would treat it the same way you did the knit two together. You would put your, need your hook under both of those loops, lift up a stitch, and purl it off. <laughs> okay. And purl back. So after you do both of your decreases, you're going to continue knitting the tie to the full length, and then you'll need to bind off. When I do my last stitch, I like to go ahead and pull, just pull that stitch until it's nice and long. Just pull up a loop and then I can go ahead and cut this tail wherever I'd like to, making sure that I leave enough to weave in. And then I can finish pulling that loop out through the last stitch. And there we are, bound off. And you can see that we can just go ahead and slide that out of the loom. And there we have our bind off. All we have left to do is go ahead and weave in the ends.